Southern Michigan is farm country, home to acre after acre of fields, livestock, and people that work the land. And it's also home to Red Bud, one of the most legendary off-road tracks in the country. And for the third time, home to the trucks and drivers of the Traxxas Torque Series. At first glance, farming life and racing might not have that much in common, but success in each requires the same things. Blood, sweat, and tears. Sometimes tears of joy. The 2013 Torque Series is heading toward its conclusion, and championship battles in all three pro categories are taking shape. Will this be the week that the leaders pull away and solidify their claim? Or will the challengers rise up and through sheer effort keep the title fight alive? Find out next. It's the Traxxas Torque Series at Red Bud. And it's right now, only on speed. The Traxxas Pro Light Division has the tightest points battle in all of torque racing. Young Guns, CJ Greaves, and Keegan Kincaid are only separated by six points. And the two men have four wins apiece heading into today's race. Which one will get the upper hand today? In the Amsoil Pro 2 class, there have been five different winners in ten races. Both Rob McCachron and points leader Bryce Menzies lead the division with three wins each. But Menzies has the points lead. Can he say the same at the end of the day? And in Red Bull Pro 4, defending champ Ricky Johnson looked likely to reclaim his crown earlier this year, but lately it's been Johnny Greaves in control. With four race wins and a 15-point lead in hand, will Johnny be good again at Red Bud? Answers to all these questions are just ahead. The Traxxas Torque Series, presented by Anzoil, comes to legendary Red Bud in Buchanan, Michigan. Hello, race fans, and welcome in. I'm Bobby Gerald alongside dirt track racing superhero Brad Doty. We are here this weekend at Red Bud for the Traxxas Torque Series, and this is a little bit different of a natural terrain setup than we've seen earlier in the season at Crandon and Bark River. This track is tighter and more technical, Brad. Well, it's tighter means it's tight turns, but it's a narrow racetrack, and it's a soft dirt. It gets really rutted up. These guys, it, when I say technical, they have to be on their lines because of those ruts. They have to be careful not to get into that kind of, you know, ruts, but it's got a lot of elevation changes, a lot of downhills. They go into a ravine. They come up out of that thing literally flying through the air, have to set up for the next turn. It's a wild racetrack. And it's really easy to get yourself into trouble here. Let's show you what happened to Ross Hook last year here as we go on board with him. That's coming out of that ravine up over a big jump right there. He turns it in the corner and it trips on the right front. Let's go on board. Listen to this. Yikers, Brad. That's a big time crash <laughs> right is. there. Oh my goodness. Ross was able to walk away from that one, of course, dejectedly. You'll see him as a little bit of a panic, you know, to get out of. You never really know you got to take inventory. You see him throw down his gloves. He was unhappy. Now let's show you what it looks like to go around this track a little bit more peacefully. We are now on board with Mike Jenkins. Brad, take us through it. Well, this is the start coming off here. It's over a couple of jumps, then right here into a sharp left-hander on the gas right here coming off. Now there'll be a small jump as they get off this corner. Not a big deal for these guys right there. But here's down into this ravine. Now, on camera, it doesn't look nearly as deep as it is when you hear up off that jump right there. A lot of air. Set the truck for a left-hander right here. Come off of this. Another small jump right here. And you have to avoid trees, Brad. Oh, there's trees <laughs> everywhere. You have to be on and off the throttle through the corners. Again, that precision, precision I talked about of the tech, technical part of this, you have to be on par right here. Now, another downhill, really rutted and, and soft dirt right here. They have to really be careful. Back to another left-hander. Down the straightaway here, coming back to the finish line. And that's a lap around Red Bud. You've had a lap around the racetrack. It is a beautiful, sunny, and 78-degree day here in Buchanan, Michigan. We talked to some of the principals about what they can expect at Red Bud. This is what we consider a natural terrain track, and, and you know we love those because that's what the sport was built on. We do have trees, we have uphills, downhills, and you know off camber turns and things of that nature. But uh, you know for us, that's the exciting part of it. They made some changes compared to last year, opening up some huge jumps. I mean, we're flying one section. I think we're doing 150 feet in the air, and then it's super technical, tight. Different style obstacles that we don't 
typically deal with, which is cool, you know? It's a motocross kind of track. I've been in motocross forever, and it helps a ton, just the flow of the track. I think passing is going to be a challenge out here because there is some one-line racing. With the right turns and being aggressive, getting your nose in there, I think it can be done. If you're not on your game 100%, it's going to bite you. It's just not just about driving. you got to respect this track. There's no question that you got to push it to the limit. Unless you're two-wheeling it, unless you're on the verge of wrecking, you're not going to do anything out here. You, you can't just drive it wide open. You know, it's going to be hard to pass on. You almost got to go door to door with somebody to, to do a pass, whether it's a good one or a... So it's what they gave us for a track. The whole track's just got some flavor, you know. It's, it's a different style of racetrack for sure. The track's in great condition. The dirt's really good right now. The weather's great. I think it's going to be fantastic. Today at Redbud, I expect to see kick-ass racing. Now, the last time you saw the Torque Series on speed, we were at Chicagoland, Route 66 Raceway, and there was trouble early for Randy Eller in the number 11. Yeah, CJ Greaves got in the back of him, turned him, he hooked the berm there and got upside down, but he was okay. Bradley Morris was out to an early lead, but he and Rafael Navarro got tangled up, and that allowed CJ Greaves to scoot through and take over the top spot. CJ went on to win. That was his fourth win of 2013 in the Pro Lights, and that moved him into second place in the point standings, only six behind the leader. In Pro 2, some exciting action. Chad Hoard had an early lead, Brad, but he over there a little bit. Yeah, on the start, they'd watered the racetrack. It was really greasy, but he got a lucky break. They had a full course caution. He was able to restart at the front, held the lead for a while. And then good action between Bryce Menzies and Chad Hoard. Watch Menzies go around the outside, around the outside. Bold and make move the pass. when you can do that on the outside on a tight corner like that. Bryce Menzies goes on to get the win. He is the points leader in the Pro 2 Series. There's Bryce, Vegas' favorite son, in Pro 4. Rob McCachron, winless going into the event at Route 66, but he had the number 21 hooked up and flying, but a little bumping and banging here. Johnny Greaves to his inside. Yeah, Rob Mack got in, took the truck took a big push. Greaves got inside, but Mack comes back, hits the inside berm, bikes a little bit, gets into Greaves, but goes on to win it. Rob Mack picking up his first win in Pro 4 of 2013. It had been a long time coming. Kelly Snyder is standing down with a winner in Pro Light, and that's CJ Greaves. Well, thanks, Bobby. Standing here with CJ, coming off of a Pro Light win in Chicago land. Let's look back at Redbud, though, last year. Finished second in both the Pro Light races, but one of the days you bicycled over, your dad, Johnny Greaves, spotting for you, really kept you calm until they flipped you back over on fours. You've been very consistent here at Redbud. How do you plan to continue the momentum and the winning streaks you've had this season? Yeah, you know, we had a great truck all year. Uh, we got two wins back to back at Redbud. We had a win right off the first weekend. And we're just going to, we have a great truck. We're going to keep the flow going. Um, I raced here at motocross as an amateur. And it's awesome to be out here with all these fans and everyone running off road trucks. So we're just going to hopefully keep the flow going and come out as champion. Well, CJ is not only running a prey light, but you'll also see him in a pro two here. He qualified fourth coming into today's race. Bobby. Thank you very much, Kelly. And uh, we also have a visitor who is uh, taking on Torque Racing for the first time here this weekend, and that is Ricky Carmichael. And of course, we don't want to get him confused with Ricky Johnson. We're talking Ricky Carmichael now. Ricky has some experience here in Red Bud, Brad. Yes, he does, on a motorcycle. They call him the GOAT, greatest of all time on a motorcycle. But now remember, the motocross track is a different racetrack than what they run the trucks on here. But he definitely is one of the favorites here. Ricky Carmichael uh, has at least the, the ability to feel comfortable because he's been here before. Let's see how comfy he is with Matt Yoakum. Bobby, Ricky Carmichael enjoyed a storied career in moto, epic wins and championships, but this weekend adding another first to his racing resume, hitting the dirt on four wheels in a torque truck. Why now jump into a torque truck, Ricky? Well, honestly, Matt, it came at a uh, perfect time. I uh, got the opportunity a couple a couple weeks ago when I was here for the Outdoor National, actually, and uh, they, they, they gave me the offer, and I'm like, you know, why not? Before, uh, when I had offers, it never really was at the right time, and I was busy doing other things, and uh, I've always wanted to try it, and uh, it came at a better time. So I can't thank everyone at uh, Torque Off-Road uh, Truck Racing enough, and uh, obviously Monster and Oakley and uh, Traxxas for this opportunity. It's going to be fun, and uh, n another thing, too, it's at Redbud. I love this place here. Every turn, every jump, 
torque trucks, they bring the excitement for the fans and also the drivers. But for you, your first time, what are the expectations going in? Well, for me, that's a great question. I, 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 my, my expectations are low. I mean, uh, the, this is a, a tough track. I've never done it. And, uh, you know, these pro lights, they can tip over pretty easy. So I just want to put in laps and have a good time. And, and main thing, hopefully, uh, hopefully the fans have a good time. That's what it's all about and uh, see what happens. The fans love RC here at Red Bud. Over his career, he's combined for nine wins on two wheels. Bob? Ricky Carmichael is going to be fun to watch. He qualified 12th out of 15. It'll be a big field of pro lights coming at you when we return to Red Bud. It's the Traxxas Torque Series. The place is here. The time is down. The top of the world and I can't come down. No, no, I can't come down. Speed's coverage of the Traxxas Torque Series is brought to you by Husqvarna, the world's largest producer of outdoor power equipment. Speed's coverage of the Traxxas Torque Series is brought to you by Traxxas, the fastest name in radio control by Amsoil, first in synthetics, and by Peak Antifreeze, run true. Welcome back to Red Bud, the pro lights uh, out on the racetrack, just getting a little reconnaissance lap right now before we get ready to go. One driver has stood out so far this season. He is Keegan Kincaid. He leads the points by just six markers coming into today. He's with Matt Yoko. An epic championship battle on pro light. Keegan Kincaid enters Red Bud, the leader, and with three race weekends left, is this the one that's most concerning to you, knowing that Cranon's your home track and your money there? Yeah, Red Bud, uh, you know, I had a little bit of problems last year. I didn't get up on the podium like I wanted to, and uh, for me, this is the most crucial race for me at this point in the season because, you know, I know I'm going back to my home crowd. I'm going to have an advantage there, and, uh, you know, just getting through this weekend, uh, being consistent, being, and hopefully get on the podium two days in a row here uh, is going to help me out significantly in this uh, in this chase with CJ. And uh, it's going to come down to the end, I know that, so it's going to be interesting. Keegan Kincaid chasing his fifth win of the 2013 season. Let's tell you a little bit about the Pro Lights. Uh, Brad Doty, give us a description. Well, there's a good look at the front of these things. They're 3,000 pounds, but the difference is the track width, if you look from tire to tire, the rear tires, it's a lot narrower than the Pro 2, 20 inches narrow. It makes these trucks really tippy, and that's what these guys have to be careful on this rough racetrack that they have here. Let's take a look at the point standings coming into this event, and that is really the story right now in Pro Light. Keegan Kincaid, you see him right there with a six-point lead right now over C.J. Greaves. Brad Lovell, the defending champion, is looming. Then Rafael Navarro and Sean Morris. You'll see the starting grid up at the top of your screen flying by what we call the hat. They are inverted by six for this feature event. It'll be Doug Matag. He was the fastest qualifier in number 81. He will start in the sixth position. But that could be very tough here as we get to our uh, race analysis, Brad, because there's not a lot of room to do passing, and so the, the six inversion could really be a detriment to some of these guys. Maybe, uh, you know, we talked to a couple drivers who said, man, I should have sandbagged. It's very tight racetrack, very narrow. You see there, 16 laps of competition caution. As always, that bunches the field back up. It's one lap under caution, and then they go back to green. But as you said, it's very tight, especially in this section. Going to be some rooting and banging going on, I believe, in this section here. I believe there will be. Well, as always, uh, with us for the Pro Lights, is Ricky Johnson. He is the founder of Torque, uh, AMA Hall of Famer. Ricky, welcome back to the booth once again. We're off. Well, we are off, and uh, climbing has gotten a whole shot, and Keegan Kincaid has came from the back. Now we see a little bit bumping and banging going on like we were talking about. This track is going to be tight, technical. First couple laps, anywhere where you see it shiny is going to be pretty slippery. So the cushion is going to be the way around the first couple laps. The two key guys to look at here, the black monster truck of CJ Greaves, second in the points and right behind him in that Traxxas truck. That is Keegan Kincaid in the number seven. And we've got CJ going to the lead. And you can see the water on the racetrack. Again, the water truck was out. They regroomed the racetrack after practice and things. And it is wet in spots. 
Now you're watching these drivers, they'll come in at the last second, you'll see the back end step out. A lot of these trucks have a double pedal, or some of them have a handbrake, which is like an emergency brake in your car without the lock button. So what, it, what they do is they come in brake, then they can hit the rear brake to rotate the back because the rear rear end is locked up and it wants to drive straight. So you gotta drive with the back of the car, a lot like when you're snow skiing. And it literally locks the rear wheels up, doesn't it? It slides the back of the truck around, then you let off the brake, mash the throttle, and drive it out of the corner. And get, and get with it. C.J. Greaves has got a handle on it. You know, he said, he said he's been running motocross forever. How does a teenager <laughs> run forever? I guess in his mind it is, but his, his motocross experience will definitely help him find new lines, find the jumps, and as the track gets rough, because here at Red Butt, it, the, the, the ruts get huge, and the braking bumps and the acceleration bumps get twice as big as any other racetrack we race with. Once he's gotten out in front, he starts to pull away. Now, Kincaid looks to the inside of Kleiman, who over-rotates there and almost spins himself out. He's able to keep it going. Kleiman, and now we're seeing Doug Tag taking a look on the inside. I think we call him Reimers. Um, I said, I, I'm terrible with pronouncing names. Reimers, yeah. Reimers is up there. He's looking really good in that uh, uh, profab truck. And... Right now, Doug Matag, who was fast yesterday, has to get through here. But remember, we have a competition yellow, so be patient at the beginning, get into the right position, and go for the kill at the end. And you saw Kincaid there, what we call bicycle up on two wheels. And Ricky, you noted the track ruts out. Why does it seem like this is a freshly built racetrack? Is that why it tends to rut out more than what you guys normally yeah, well, see? When you build a motocross track, right, you, you want that. You want the track like that. You want it lonely. You want it, you want to dig, but you just got a little four-inch wide tire. Here, we're trying to tip side to side, so we're right there when you see that upper, upper mechanics corner that we call it, it's hard to slick. That works better for the trucks because it lets them a little bit more like a sprint car track, but anytime they regroom it, you put that tire down, put that horsepower down, it builds a big run. The battle for third right now, that's Cam Reimers in the 21 right behind him. The quickest qualifier in the group, Doug Matag. Those two catching up to Keegan Kincaid just a little bit right now. Probably, the, is that the slowest corner of the racetrack, Ricky? Definitely, the slowest and the most frustrating. It's a left-handed, it's a right-handed corner, so you're on the left side of the truck, so any kind of tipping, it's, mul it's multiplied, and you feel like the truck's coming over on top of you. I want to make a correction. That's not ProFab, that's InFab. That's a guy from Southern California back in the day that I knew, and uh, so apologies out to him. Cam Reimers, there's Doug Matag in the 81, the black Ethica, and there's Cam Reimers in the 21. Reimers working in third right now. Matag is fourth, and right behind him, it is Rafael Navarro. Just underway here in the Traxxas Pro Light Division. The early leader is CJ Greaves. He's out to a four second advantage, though, in the early going. Yeah, CJ's got a really, really strong position, and Cam Reimers comes from a quad racing background, so it's actually a little closer to a truck, but he, he could lean off one side or the other when it comes to when it comes to a quad. There's the advantage for CJ Greaves in the monster truck, number 33. He is your early leader. Running right behind him, it is Keegan Kincaid. CJ Greaves trying to make up some ground in the point standings. We'll come back to Red Bud in a moment. You can see that we are under caution here at Red Bud, and we're gonna show you the reason why. A driver racing for the first time this season in the Torque Series, Jimmy Stevenson, ran into some trouble here. You can see he comes in, throws a pendulum, he's in the red truck, he comes to the off-camera turn, I think I got it, to turn into it, turn out of it, turn into it, oh. and hits one of those ruts and goes over. Brad, you've been up on two wheels on, in a sprint car, you know what he went through. Yeah, and it looks like instead of turning back to the right, he's thinking, I still gotta make the turn here, he never does, does turn it back to the right, and just lays it over. It looks totally saved there. And yeah. Then he yep. Almost gets nailed, but it ends up just tipped over, and they were able to get him back onto all fours. They did go full course caution here, though, and that's a little bit different than what we see uh, at some of the other tracks where there's more racing room. They'll just give you a little bit yellow. A little bit more room that, that they can work around and stuff like that. With this being a tight track, go ahead and bunch him back up. The fans want to see good racing. CJ Greaves is just killing everybody, and now he's got keep Keegan Kincaid right on his bumper, ready to go green, and there's Jimmy Stevenson back in the field. Cam Reimers running in third, and it is Doug Matag in fourth. Rafael Navarro's in that red truck running in fifth. We are back under power. Greaves with a great restart, though. Pulls away, but let's see if Kincaid get to the inside. Oh, we got Reimers to the inside of Kincaid, but can't do anything there off the turn. And Reimers may have left himself open to a Doug Matag attack. In the 81, yes, Matag is able to get by him and pick up third place. Before he went to caution, it looked like Matag was a lot faster than Reimers, but again, the tight racetrack, seemed like he was all over him. He just couldn't get by him, and now he has. Well, this track, you know, and you can tell, talk about it, Brad. When you have a sprint car track that starts off kind of soft, oh, he get up on two wheels, he turns into it, saves it, but now he has Doug Matag looking inside. 
Looking outside, looking back inside again. These guys are going after it. Oh, and watch out for the tree. Exactly. <laughs> the tree? The, yeah, the, which one are you talking about? Yeah, I hear you. Here's the tight spot where we saw the Stevenson get upside down. Very tight. 180 right there. You can see the difference in the coloration of the dirt at different ends of the racetrack. What's that about, Ricky? Well, it's, it's loamy. It's soft underneath, so that water has been down here. It's been a little bit wet up here in the summertime. So now it's starting to get wetter and wetter, a little more cushion. Matt Yoka, what do you know about Keegan Kincaid at this point? Well, you guys touched on uh, going up on two wheels. That was a section of the racetrack that he told me he had a lot of concern about it. After about two or three laps, uh, racing with a heavy heart this weekend, his grandfather, Doug, passed away. First time he's ever competed without his championship father, Jeff, helping out with advice, but looking to score another win his fifth this year. Kelly? And definitely talked about the qualifying and how close their times were in this category. He said, looking at it overall, I much rather would have been stuck in the fourth place position coming into the start today to get ahead of these guys because this track is so tight to pass on. But Doug Matag, right behind him, trying to make the passes, qualified fastest on this track. So both of those guys are going to be pushing towards the front right now. Well, if, if you had your choice, you know, I would always rather start up front, no matter what. But it's a mental thing. When you go out there and someone kicks your butt and is a second or a half a second faster than you, it puts a little mental spike on you. So right now, Doug Matag, if he's the fastest guy on the track, he'll be able to catch and race with CJ. But right now, CJ is the man that's putting down the fastest laps. But especially you have to keep that mind on a tight racetrack like this. What's it pay to win? What's it pay to qualify? You want to you know, start up front if you can when it's this hard to pass. Right? Well, in a championship point, now in a championship deal, you get two points for being fast qualifier, so every point counts. I've lost a couple championships by three three points, and uh, I, I, you know, I got second qualifying yesterday, only made one point on Johnny, so that was a painful point, gentlemen, let me tell you. So it, oh, oh, back up on two. Oh, one. he saved it. Keegan Kincaid was just about to uh, tip it all the way over. He rode that bicycle. Doug Matag is able to sneak by, though. Doug, I'm really impressed with Doug. I've known him for a long time. He's a Southern California boy. He's sponsored by Ethic Underwear Company, and his dad, Chad, builds, builds the truck. His family, they, they really push him. Oh, and Doug goes around. Oh, good thing that no contact, but he is going to go back to fourth position. Reimers sneaks by as well as Kincaid. So it's now Kincaid second, Reimers third, Matag. The fastest qualifier is shuffled back to fourth. And in the meantime, CJ Greaves getting away from everybody out in front. Boy, as hooky as that corner is, we see the truck get upside down. You wouldn't think that'd be one corner the guy would over rotate like Matag did there in that in that end of the racetrack. Well, Doug did actually everything right, but on the exit, he was just a little hard on the gas, got hit the slick spot and came around. But Brad, you can talk about the uh, tracks. You know, you go to a sprint car track where it's been raining a lot, it's going to be really soft. Starts off a typical line, but then it gets so rough in the main line, they just end up running the cushion before it gets settled. And that's what we got here. You, you, the line is going to move all day long. And that's the beauty of any dirt racetrack. It's going to change. Not only lap to lap, definitely race to race. Yep. Really good racing right now for the second position as Reimers is all over Kincaid and Matag all over Reimers here. Those three could shuffle, I think, at, at any point. Well, I think this just goes to show you, Rhymers, like I said, he was a quad champion and he raced that. So he's used to reading bumps and berms and bumps and stuff like that. So he's he, this is his style of track, so it's no surprise to see him up there. And the competition caution comes out, signaling the halfway point of this one. We are eight laps in of this 16 lapper. A couple of incidents have taken place here. Brad, tell us what happened as uh, Keegan Kincaid has a close call. We Gets down this corner again. This is we did this once before. I don't know if this is the first time he gets. Okay, early he got in on the inside berm and bicycle. This time he just goes in there and hooks, and gets up on two wheels. Does a great job saving it, but Matag gets by. And then Doug Matag is going to have his own issue, Ricky. Doug comes around, gets on the gas a little bit hard. The 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 back wheels jumped out of the berm and got up in the fluff and came around. So Doug did a great job. Also Keegan did an awesome job not to not to run him over. You know, because you got all that head of steam and the guy sideways. Sometimes you end up running into him. And you've talked about it before in the pro light category. These guys have a lot of torque, not a lot of tire. Exactly. Very uh, production tire. These are the same things that you guys can buy off the shelf. And, uh, and they don't have a lot of travel either. So let me tell you, it gets a little rough out there. Let's check in on the progress of Ricky Carmichael and see how he's doing right now. He is running in the 11th position so far. He said he didn't have big, big expectations, Brad, but you know what a competitor's a competitor. He's probably not real happy with 11. Yeah, well, I talked to him yesterday, and, and you know, this is first weekend ever in one of these trucks, and he didn't know where the line is. I mean, the line of how far do you push the truck? 
I said, basically, the only way you find it is to tip over. Then you know you went too far. You know, but he says he's on the verge. He feels like he's on the verge of tipping over every lap, and that goes back to the pro light and this racetrack. You're going to have that. You see the resume there on the graphic for Ricky Carmichael, what he's been able to do in motocross action. But as Brad mentioned, if you if you didn't catch the top of the show, the truck track is different than the motocross track. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, the, just the, where you can put the vehicle. And like Ricky was saying, in this section right here, he goes, I can't see. I'm trying to look over the dash. I'm trying to stretch my neck. I'm like, well, you don't have a real long neck anyways. Yeah, but it's not a very tall guy. It's, it's hard to see out there. And you got to learn to look past that dash. Welcome to my world, huh? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Can't stand up in the truck, right? <laughs> and we are restarted and back at it. Working on lap number nine of 16, just past the halfway point, and one and two of the point standings are running right together on the racetrack. Kelly Snyder did the interview with CJ Greaves earlier and talked about him. You know, he got upside down in this race last year. You gotta wonder, is that in his mind at all out front leading this race? And seeing these other guys, the trouble they're having. Well, Bobby, I mean, I mean, uh, you know the racers have a very short memory. Keen Kincaid doesn't even care that he almost flipped to three laps That's ago. True. So you just forget about it and you go forward. And really, CJ is the one guy that at least we haven't caught him on camera yet having an issue. We've definitely seen Kincaid and Matag have some problems here in the early going. We saw Jimmy Stevenson have an issue. But right now, CJ Greaves, it's all good for him. Well, CJ's running Pro 2 as well, so when you get that much seat time and you're throwing on a bigger vehicle with a lot more horsepower, sometimes these little cars feel like a toy, you know, and so he can handle it and he's one step ahead because the Pro 2 is a little bit faster and a little bit fat, uh, a little bit stronger, you know. It probably almost feels like maybe a little bit like slow motion once he's in the Pro Light compared to the Pro 2. Exactly, and he's a, he's a great little shoe, you know, Johnny and I are fierce competitors. Here we see Reimer looking up, Reimer looking up the inside. Reimers, whoa! Take, take, take a guess who's coming out of that thing. And with all the roofs flying right there, it's going to be Keegan Kincaid. Now to the inside comes Doug Matag in the 81. The battle for third is on. This is an awesome race. We've got a yellow flag out, so the guy's got to be careful. Um, we have a couple cars Whoa. spun around. we got Rafael Navarro. And then and right there is we've got to get everybody back in line. Um, we talked about that we're not going to the previous lap. What we're doing is just gentleman's agreement. So Doug let him back by and back on it local yellow in that case and you can see right there why there is a tendency to have more full course yellows let's take a look at what happened there to set up that local yellow flag here comes Raphael from the back he clips into the back of oh and he touches the tire and up and up and over he goes got in the big ute tire and just turned him right over 20 year old Raphael Navarro having a problem right there that necessitates a local yellow. It is CJ Greaves in front of Keegan Kincaid and Cam Rymers right now. 10 laps in at Redbud. We are back at Redbud. Welcome, it's CJ Greaves, your leader right now over Keegan Kincaid. Kincaid is the points leader. CJ Greaves trying to make up some ground on him right now, though, as he has the lead in that monster number 33. CJ, 18 years old, the son of Johnny Greaves, who you'll see a little bit later on in the program, running in the Pro 4s. CJ's going to do double duty. We'll see him in the Pro 2s coming up next. But he's pretty much been dominant in this race so far, Brad. Yeah, he has now. Keegan staying with him. Nice corner through there. Keegan Kincaid. You know, it's frustrating, Brad. When you, you know what it's like. You're chasing somebody, you're waiting for them to make a mistake, and they don't make one mistake. You know, and then you, you try something, you make a little bit, then you lose a little bit. So right now, Keegan seems like he has faster section times, but, man, uh, Grease is just flawless. He's yeah. not making any mistakes out there. Yeah. I hate to bring it up, Brad, but I do. I know that you do know that feeling because how many times you finished second to Steve Kinzer in 1987? Uh, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Too many times, you know. And, and it does get it does get frustrating, and you, and you wonder if some of these guys are feeling some of that with with Greaves and some of the guys that win all the time, you know. Well, but the cool thing about this is it's not an oval that there's jumps and uphill, uphills and downhills and different lines and everything, and the track changing. You can start changing your line and start trying to find something that your truck likes. It's not like when you go out and you go, well, my truck's not, you know, like, you don't hear somebody say, oh, I had a fifth place truck. You know, the, yeah, no, I was a fifth place driver. That's the way it goes. Uh -huh. You know, so no excuses. If you can't find a way around, you have to start searching for it. That's the neat thing about this. And from what I've seen about it, the driver makes a big difference. You can move around on the racetrack, depending on how, how hard you run it, finding that line. And again, being a dirt racetrack, that always helps too. Exactly. And 
anything can happen here. You see the points up on the top of the screen. There's uh, Greaves, Kincaid, and Brad Lovell sitting 52 points back. Right now, Lovell's in fifth place here in this race. C.J. Greaves continues to show the way. C.J. just 18 years old. C.J.'s truck looking really good. I know he, him and Johnny look really close with the guys from Fox Shocks. His truck looks really balanced when he's jumping. It's not nose high, it's not nose low. A lot of that's the driving technique, when you scrub, when you break, when you hit the gas, things like that. But the setup on that truck is spot on right now. I'm not taking anything away from CJ, but his truck is working good. Makes a big difference. Doesn't make a driver look like a hero when you got a good, good equipment under you. It's always awesome bringing the gun to a knife fight. <laughs> Cam Reimer's in the number 21, trying to hang on to third. Wants to be up there on the podium, but right now he's feeling the pressure from Doug Matag. Now gets away from Doug, separates him by a couple of truck lengths. Well, you guys brought up the sprint car thing a while ago. Reimer's running in third. He's from the state of Iowa. Big sprint car fan. He follows it really close. He's got a good run going today. Yeah, he does. His best finish so far this season, Brad, is fifth. He's done that twice. So right now trying to stand up there on the podium for the first time in 2013. You know that'd be huge for Reimers. Well, you can see now with, with these ruts are getting so big in the corners, those are 30, 32 inch tires. Those ruts are about 18 inches tall. So if, if you hit them too hard, it's going to grab over half of your wheel and flip you. So you see the burn that they're leaning up against. You have to manhandle it, but you have to make sure that you finesse your way into the rut so it doesn't throw you on your lid. Now, how often do you guys pack the wheels full of, full of mud where it vibrates the truck on a track like this? Quite a bit. Some of the guys you'll see, they'll run foam in the back wheels. I don't because it, 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 it keeps heating them in the brakes and stuff, and you can set the brakes on fire because I, I, I brake pretty hard on my stuff, but uh, a lot of times you will get a big chunk of dirt, fill up the wheel, and you feel the vibration. White flag's going to be flying here momentarily. It'll be one to go for C.J. Greaves. Looking comfortable right now. He is out in front with no worries except for making every turn, precise. Exactly. And you watch him. He's running high. He's running low. He's doing his homework for the Pro 2 class is what he's doing. He's got a big enough lead with the white flag. So now he can go, oh, let's see what that look, Let's see what that burn works like. Oh, attack, attack. Doug Matag going down right before the finish line, so that's going to hurt him. We see uh, Keegan and Reimers in the, behind them and no Doug Matag, so he's probably going to go back to sixth or seventh place. Yeah, that'll that's benefit coming. Brad Lovell. That was coming for the white flag. I don't know what happened. It's going to coming straight away. Matag that turned around, obviously. He was really pushing it. He came over a jump and was dead sideways almost uh, just a few moments ago. Talking about Matag as we now look at C.J. Greaves in the monster number 33. There was a good look at the rear wheels locking up as, as Greaves went into the corner there to set the truck. Yeah, I like CJ style. He's using the berms to to help him get off the corner. He's right. He's driving the track a lot like you would race the race this on a motorcycle. You come in, set yourself into the rut, and drive yourself out. Try not to you know be too aggressive on your way in. So CJ doing a great job. If CJ can hang on and win, uh, it looks like he will. Barring something really unforeseen, it will be his fifth win. There it is of 2013 and he will gain some points on the second place finisher Keegan Kincaid they came in only separated by six but CJ Greaves gets it done and let's give a big tip of the cap to Cam Reimers on the podium today his best finish of 2013 he brings it home in third we'll come back with more you'll hear from the winners Welcome back to Buchanan, Michigan. Husqvarna Redbud Challenge here at Redbud Motocross. We have a winner in the Pro Lights, and it's CJ Grease, who is downstairs with Kelly Snyder. Well, guys, one very excited CJ Greaves climbing out of the truck here. He seemed to almost make that race look easy out in front of everybody. You talked about racing at Redbud as an amateur motocross racer. You drove this truck out there like it was a motorcycle. What a great race for you. Yeah, you know, we always had good luck here. I mean, we rolled last year here and came back to second. Uh, I mean, I don't know what else I can ask for. I have a great crew behind me. The fans were awesome. The track was great. I, it all just came together, but I couldn't do it without all my sponsors. Monster, Toyota Maxxis, uh, uh, Forest County Potawatomi, Amsoil, Speed TV for hooking us up. Everyone, thanks a lot. Well, you talked a lot about these trucks just being well prepared, and it's all about having a good truck out there. Going into the Pro 2s, how is Pro Lights going to compare to that second race today? Yeah, you know, Pro, the Pro Light helps me for the Pro 2 because now I got extra track time. I know where the holes are going to develop. So hopefully, we can go out in Pro 2 and do the same thing. Well, congratulations, CJ Greaves, taking the first in the Pro Light race, guys. Very nicely done there by CJ Greaves. Let's take a look at the results for the Pro Lights. CJ gets the win over Keegan Kincaid. Cam Reimers, though, doing a great job, Brad. Yeah, first podium finish of the season. Great job this weekend.
Doug Matag rebounds for fifth. Yeah, Doug did a little spin out, uh, spun out a couple times actually and came back. So that's why he was the fastest guy out there. And Ricky Carmichael, where did he fare? He ends up 12th in this one. Matt Yoakum. Coming in, championship port leader Keegan. You had a lot of concern about the section, especially up on the hill, and you took the e-ticket ride there up on two wheels. Oh, uh, yeah, it was more than once. Uh, that was rough up there. You know, I was trying to catch CJ any way I could, and I kept finding the wrong line, and uh, it put me up on two wheels, and Spotter was telling me, you know, he's right behind you, right behind you, so you can't make any mistakes. And I was trying to push CJ a little bit, trying to make mistakes, but we're happy to put this Traxxas machine up on, on the podium today. You were worried going in about the track really running up after about two or three laps. Did you see that come to fruition? Oh, yeah, it was worse than I expected. Uh, when we practiced it, it got, it got ate up really fast within three laps, and uh, it probably wasn't that, and it was already missing ruts, and you're trying to just survive out there. Coming in, he just wants to survive right here at Red Button. He scores his ninth podium of 2013. And a big smile uh, under tough circumstances. Yeah, tough circumstances. His dad, his grandpa, Doug Kincaid, passed away a couple days ago, and, and his father, Jeff, is not here. So I'll always remember him at Log Cabin Cafe. He's two points. Uh, uh, he's still got the point lead by two points, Brad. But, you know, it's always tough when you got something heavy on your heart when you're out there trying to race. It is, but you got to block that out once he straps into that thing. And with Cran their next race, Cranon his home track, only two-point lead. He's got to be feel, feeling some pressure. Cam Reimers, well, a great day, Kelly. Oh, what a great day this has been for him. Your first podium during your rookie season with us. But you said you've had a little experience here at Red Bite on quads. You drove this thing like a quad while CJ was driving like a motorcycle up there. Yeah, it was really good. The track suited my style well. Um, it's the only place on the series that we've been to before. So it's awesome to come here and the lines develop just like a motocross track. I mean, it was so rough out there. Um, it, was, it was just crazy. Well, and we saw the battle between you and Keegan and also you and Doug Matag, so a great run for you. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, I got the, the start was really slick, and I lost a couple spots right off the bat um, and kind of just got myself together and worked my way back forward. Um, it's just awesome to get to a motocross track and get Infab, Ty Lube, SSI, all motocross guys, um, you know, a podium. Awesome. Congratulations to Cam Reimer, guys. And that smile says it all. Cam Reimers is loving life right now here in Buchanan, Michigan. When we come back, we will step it up a little bit. The Amsoil Pro 2s are coming up next. Welcome back to Red Bud. Some young fans I, they are excited, fired up, and ready to go, and so are we. It'll be the Pro 2s coming up next, but first let's tell you a little bit about Mike Jenkins. Not just a driver, he's also the president of Traxxas, the title sponsor of the Torque Series, and his business is booming. Well, Traxxas is building a whole new corporate campus back in McKinney, Texas, where we call home. We got 29 acres up there, and the project's planned to be uh, two buildings encompassing a little over 200,000 square feet. And yeah, we've had a vision of developing a corporate campus that gave us the opportunity to really house uh, a growing team of engineers, test facilities, uh, and just handle the growth in business that we've uh, endured. We're 27 years old at this point, and our engineering team is over 30 people large. For us, that's significant. The transfer of knowledge and uh, engineering design and experience and tune uh, all moves right over from scale, radio control size product to full size racing. Uh, you'll find a number of our Traxxas engineers uh, participate in full-size racing to be able to take that back to what we know and can apply in a scale world. Uh, this year we completed our first design of a Pro 4 chassis. Uh, Rob McCachran's running that now and we're, uh, we're, we're finally getting it to the point where we really want it to be, but you know, with each design that you, br you bring to market, or in this case, uh, bring to the racetrack, you're always looking for improvement. And we think we have some advantage and it's starting to prove itself out with Rob's truck. You know, the process it takes a number of engineers. It takes not just the guys that are educated, uh, applying that you know, through maybe computer design and uh, in their testers, but it also takes the field engineers. In the race world, field, field engineers are really your crew, your crew chief, uh, the guy that's tuning your suspension. All of those guys are engineers. Whether, they're, uh, whether they have the background educationally or not, they gain that in real world applications and the note taking and the results that we find from whatever tune and change we make. Our first few laps that we get on the racetrack in a test session over a race weekend generally has this challenge with a whole new racetrack, different conditions, dirt's always ever changing. 
who knows what we've had for rain and how slick or how dry or how you know muddy it is going to be and being able to study that video whether it be with GoPro cameras on board uh, analyzing uh, you know slow motion movement of shocks and uh, or whether it's actually you know from afar and actually seeing how how well the truck is packing up the shocks and holding those before we release off of each jump uh, it's all critical to us it's part of the data that we have to study in order to go faster A little bit about Mike Jenkins there. Let's find out about a Pro 2 truck, Brad Doty. Well, custom built. These are purpose built race trucks. You see it there, 750 to 900 horsepower. When they say Pro 2, that means two wheel drive. But look at the stance. Look at the, the track width of that versus what we just saw, the Pro Light. These things are 90 inches wide, kind of low to the ground for an off road, road truck. But boy, a lot of horsepower, 3,750 pounds, and they haul the mail around these race tracks. Good look at the Pro 2. Those are uh, coming up. They're actually out on the racetrack right now. Just getting warmed up before they get set to line up. Kelly uh, Snyder had a chance to talk with our points leader, Bryce Menzies. Well, Bryce, you're leading the points in the Pro 2 class, but during qualifying, you haven't been as consistent. What do you think the difference is for you between qualifying and race day? Yeah, I think it always struggle in qualifying. I mean, I start out front every time in qualifying because of the points leader. Um, you know, I don't have anybody in front of me to chase down, so I think it kind of messes with me in my head. But, you know, during the race, we always uh, end up well. So looking forward to today. This track's real technical. It's going to be rough. A lot of bang going on. So just looking forward to getting out there and putting this thing on top of the box. And with such a tight track, where do you think you're going to be able to make those passes? I think you're going to have to get it done early. We're starting third row, but, you know, with my team setting up my truck, we're going to have a good truck. Um, you know, there's a couple places where you can pass. Other places is going to be really tough, so you're going to see a lot of action going on. Look forward to it. As we check the, the starting grid up on the uh, top of your screen, you'll see once again they're inverted by six in this event. So it'll be Mike Oberg who will start from the pole position and the fastest time trialer in this group was Rob McCacken. You see the point standings there on the left side of the screen. It's Menzies right now, 27 points up on McCacken, followed by Chad Hort, CJ Greaves. Those four all still within striking distance. Mike Jenkins is in fifth in the 47 truck. The race analysis, Brad, similar to what we've seen so far. Well, again, there it is, 16 laps, and they always have that competition caution about halfway through, and that's a full lap under caution around the racetrack. Let's guys go to the hot pit if they need to to work on the track for that one lap, but it bunches the field back up, and that lap obviously does not count as a 16 laps under green. Mike Oberg there on the inside of the front row. He's already got something happening there at the rear end. Ricky, what's going on there? Ah, a little bit of fiberglass. That ain't going to hurt anything. This is mud flap is still intact, so they'll, they'll, they're just going to let it go. Um, it might give him a little arrow, you know, pull one side or the other when he goes off the jumps, but I'm going to give it about 100 feet and it's, it's going to be, be gone. 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 <laughs> it's going it. to be roosted yeah. right off of there. So we got the two mics, Jenkins and Oberg up on the front row. We got Chad Horton, CJ Greaves, and we got the first and second, Bryce Mizzies, and then Rob McCachron is going to be on the inside which is going to be our right driver left pace truck pulls off and the green is in the air for the pro twos mike over getting to jump on the outside chad horn making a move on the inside as well but oh. mike jenkins leaning in a little bit not giving chad a bunch of room so we're already racing oh yeah. mike gets up over the cushion there he in he's no off. man's land? Yeah, he's yeah. off the course. Yeah. You drop a wheel here, it's, it's not just like hitting a curb. Yep. You drop down about three or four feet, because even though it looks flat, that's a burn barrier right there. Yeah, kind of an off-camera corner anyways, and then you get over that burn, and it's way downhill. When, when I kind of cringed there, was on the start, Hort came down on the burn when he came over that jump. I actually landed the left side tires on the inside burn. Yeah, that's just funny, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no jump a lot. And here we see Bryce Minzy going to the inside of Rob McCacker, where McCacker's going to have the inside up on the top. Leaning on Bryce a little bit. Uh, those guys are from, they used to be teammates. Uh, I'm going to say they're not really love loss, but they are fierce competitors. But right now, Mike Oberg, he always does well when he gets out in front. He's one of those guys when he sees, sees clean air, he runs out in front. He's been a long time sponsored from Amsoil, so it's good to see him up front. And then some, some guys, that, you know, they need, they need a rabbit. They need that they run better behind to chase somebody. And, and some guys like it better out front. Pick their own. Oh, Chad. Same Horn thing happened there in the fluff. Same thing happened to Chad Horn that happened to Mike Jenkins. Came in, didn't get the car rotated sideways, hit a hole, threw him right into a push and lost the position. Boy, and the fluff is getting deep up there. We talked about off camera. They reworked the racetrack in between every races. A lot of heavy equipment out here. They watered, they regrouped the track, but boy, it didn't last long. You know, one lap and it's already showing dust and it's already showing holes. So these Pro 2s, they beat up a track, the track worse than we do in the Pro 4 because 
all the pressure just going to two tires. The roost is way, way heavier because everything's coming off those back too. So we see Bryce Menzies looking the inside of Chad Hoard. But we see C.J. Greaves now starting to work his way up to Mike Oberg. It's Oberg out in front. Oberg's best finish was a third at the season opener at Dodge City earlier this year. So right now he's looking good. C.J. Greaves in the second position. Yeah, the guys are starting to spread out a little bit. They're going to do the race their own race. But right now, C.J. Greaves seems to be making it up. Good battle. C.J. Greaves now looking to the inside of Oberg. It's a fight for the lead. Oberg has it in the number 80 truck. Well, every time that somebody would try to inside pass there, and you know what it's like, when it's real slick down low in the sprint car, you have to use that momentum. So using the berm seems to help the guys. You have to really make your pass happen. You're not just going to drive around the inside of somebody. Ricky, what's the visibility like in a situation like this when you're chasing? If you've ever uh, stood behind a snowblower, that's pretty <laughs> much what it's like, and it's dirt. But, but right now, C.J. Greaves is getting to move on him this is going to put him on the outside in this turn but on the inside down at the bottom so great move by cj greaves pushes him out a little bit gains control and runs away on the inside cj greaves getting it done the 18 year old and in this particular division he is by far the youngest competitor in pro two and it, and it made me look like to, to a lot of people he was moving that the guy out on purpose but he'd been running that line where he'd been entering high and trying to turn the truck to get down low like that well anybody that thought he was moving him out on purpose is absolutely right and that's what's part that's part of this racing is that you have to control the guy before you pass him if you just try to pass him and open up the next door he can take a swipe at you so what cj did was awesome got next to him pushed him out to where he can't you know mike couldn't hurt him and then got away and now he's got a six 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 truck length lead but he had been kind of my point that he had been kind of running that line anywhere yes. where he would swing Wing wide to enter that corner rather than try to keep it tight against the inside. Chad Hort is now falling back in a couple positions, oh. and here we see Bryce Mizzy looking at the inside of Oberg. Same place that uh, CJ made the pass, but he's not going to make it stick. Bryce Menzies is the man on the move right now in that Red Bull number one truck right behind Oberg. He is making moves and not faking moves, guys. He is challenging for second. He actually had the Nerf bar, the panel hanging off the left door, door of Menzies' truck there. Yeah, well, well they're, they're, they're banging side to side. There's a lot going back and forth, so I don't know if it's, it's not going to, it's just more cosmetic. So there is a good look at Bryce Menzies in the Red Bull number one. He runs in the third position, trying to get after Mike Obert, who is the leader. They are half, or who is running second. Out in front, it is C.J. Greaves, who won in the Pro Lights, trying to go back to back here at Red Bull. We'll come back with more of the Pro Twos. Welcome back to Red Bud in Buchanan, Michigan. C.J. Greaves is the leader, but Brad, he has a, a, something going on there in the front end. Well, I, the left front tire is going, looks low, and I noticed it's getting lower and lower and getting flatter. We got a shot of it. And he really leans on it. See if it right around this corner. Look at it right there. You can see the rim almost digging in. Now, these have B-block wheels. But that left front tire is definitely losing air. Yeah, and we also run interliners here, so he can run it for a while. And, and with it being a, a Pro 2, it's on his front. And, and luckily for him, there's not that many right-hand turns. There's, I think there's two or three right-hand turns. The rest are left hands, but it's definitely hurts you. What are the chances of the, of the tire coming apart, though? Would, would it blow apart, or there's not enough laps left? We're going to have a com com competition caution coming up, but... Uh, yeah, but I don't see it coming apart. It's just, okay. just going to make it really hard for him on those right-hand turns. It's going to go down to the rim and make him want a bicycle. So we'll see what happens in this next right-hand corner. See, so going in the left-hand is not a problem because he's floating the inside wheel. Yep. Now here's where he's really going to have this. is where we've seen a lot of guys bicycle and get in trouble. But he rotates it, it around, keeps the back of the truck kicked out. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's completely flat, just a little bit low. But Bryce Minzy now looking high and looking low. Yeah, Minzy's is definitely gaining ground on C.J. Greaves, the lead just over a second last time around. The competition caution is going to be coming out, but again, keep in mind, any pit action here by C.J. Greaves would put him to the rear of the field. Yeah, he's not going to give that no. up. No, he's not going to pit. He's not going to take that chance. No, because even when he, when he goes slow, it doesn't look, it just looks like it's low, so maybe he has a slow leak or, or something. It doesn't look like it's on the wheel uh, down on the rim to me. Well, as you remember back in our pro lights, Ricky Carmichael running for the first time in 2013 with the Torque Series. Matt Yoakum caught up with Ricky Carmichael after his run. Bobby, another first in Ricky Carmichael's storied motorsports career. Your first Torque race, it's over. How would you describe it to all your fans? Well, it was wild, that's for sure. Dirt, dust flying everywhere. And uh, just when I was starting to pick it up and learn it, my throttle stuck. And uh, I had to, man, it's like, it's quick. You, you think about how quick you have to do stuff, shut it down, I shut it down, and then uh, 
I don't know what happened after. I, I was like, dude, you guys take it from here. But uh, nonetheless, it was fun, and I can't wait for tomorrow. RC always brings the excitement, whether on two or four wheels. Bobby and Brad, I, just, I, I hate to tell Ricky, but you know he is racing for Trax's RC company, so maybe they just thought he wasn't going fast enough, and they started driving from uh, from out there. But he had enough sense to turn that turn that uh, turn that sucker off before he went to the fence. Good stuff there from Ricky Carmichael. There's your leader, C.J. Greaves, and you can take a look at his left front tire. Yep, you can see it buckled. You did a good eye, Brad. I mean, it's not completely flat here, but as he was cruising around on the competition yellow, you see that the tire is going down. Luckily, he has an inner liner in there that's going to hold the tire up, but still, he's that's going to be tough when you got someone like the defending champion, Bryce Menzies, on your tail. C.J. Greaves, uh, how much do you think he really did gain an advantage from running in the pro lights and being out there on the racetrack you know well he's watched and he's been out there for a while and, you know seeing what lines are developing where it gets slick where the, the cushion comes in so a lot like a sprint car track ricky would you say it's a bigger jump to go from the pro light to the pro 2 than it is the pro 2 to the pro 4 um just completely different pro 2 to pro 4 is pretty hard if you go if you start in pro 4 then go to pro 2 without all that it's a much easier transition from pro 2 to pro 4 but you are absolutely right brad his his left front tire is a little lower than the right well, it'll be interesting to see uh, how he's able to baby that along here, if he can baby it along. And Bryce Menzies is all over him, running in the second position. Mike Oberg still running is in third. There's C.J. Greaves' crew. Now, whether he could feel that left front or not, we didn't know under speed, but you can bet the, right there the spotters are telling him. Yep, so now what he's going to do is try to run and hide, and hopefully whoever's behind uh, Bryce to give him some grief. Bryce Menzies. Matt Yoakum, you can give us a little more information as Bryce Menzies looks to the inside of C.J. Greaves, and Menzies puts the Red Bull truck in front, but here comes Greaves right back, side-by-side -side racing for the lead. Boy, I don't think the tire had anything to do with that because it was a left-hand turn getting into the, to the, on the restart. And problems for Andy Zipper. He went off the course. Something happened. Him and Chad Horton, big Big, big trouble. Chad Horton's truck looks like it's half hanging, hanging apart. You know, so something went on in the back. We can't see that right now. We're back to the lead. Bryce Menzies is out in front. C.J. Greaves in second with uh, Marco uh, Oberg in second. Mike Oberg in second, third and looking at second. Rob Mack right behind Oberg as those three now fight it out for the second position. Menzies out in front. Point Oberg big. next to run. Big chunk of, you could see in that corner that the ruts are really getting deep in that last corner. Bryce Menzies flying through the air in the Red Bull number one. Your points leader from Las Vegas, Nevada. He is an extreme dude, and right now he is out in front in a big way here in the Pro Twos. We're nine laps in. A lot more to come from Red Bull. Welcome back to Buchanan, Michigan. We are in action right now, 10 laps complete in this 16 lap event. Bryce Menzies is out in front in the Pro 2 class. Menzies starting to pull away a little bit now. Last time around, his lead 2.7 seconds. He's the points leader. He is 25 years old, three wins on the season, looking to make it number four. Bryce is a very busy man right now. He's been racing Global Rallycross with Travis Pastrana. Next week, he's racing Vegas to Reno. He's a defending champion, uh, not last year, but the year before, in the score trophy truck class. And he also has a brand new series on Red Bull called Racing Dirty. So check that out. It's on YouTube, some different stuff. So Bryce, a very busy young man. Yeah, I saw the trailer for that. It looks pretty interesting, yep. Follows Bryce and his friends around, and uh, they're up to some hijinks and no good. <laughs> it's kind of a motorsports entourage, and boy, he lives the life. He's, he's a good kid, though. And then this guy, I have to say, I've worked with a lot of different guys, everybody from Jeff Stanton to Jimmy Johnson and stuff, and Bryce Minzy is one of the smoothest drivers that I've ever worked with. And, uh, you know, I, all I do is give him a couple tips, and he runs with it. So Bryce Minzy is very deserving of all the championships and all the accolades that he's getting. But right now, we see Rob Mack, who uh, unfortunately for him qualified first, and now he's having a hard time working his way up to the front. So very, very rough in the back for Rob Mack. Let's find out, uh, get a check-in on C.J. Greaves with Matt Yoakum. Bobby, underneath that uh, competition caution, CJ's dad, Johnny, was telling him, just remain calm, run your lines. Remember, big picture-wise, there are only seven markers out of second in the standings, and he just keeps telling CJ the distance he's got. He's got a cushion. Just remain calm and just run his line, trying to nurse that truck to the finish. CJ is seven points behind Rob McCaffrey for second in the point standings. Bryce Menzies well out in front in the points uh, in this series. Chad Horde runs third in the point standings. 
There is C.J. Greaves. Well, Brad, you have to give him kudos, though, for getting the job done with a, a truck that probably is less than 100% right now. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, and he's doing a good job. He just has to be, remember, when he goes into a right-hand turn, what, what to expect, and try not to lean on that left front corner too much. Mike Oberg, I, want, I really want to give, throw him some props because you know, he's one of those guys that is, lives and breathes this stuff. You know, he does, he builds, works on his own trucks and everything. And he's from the Crandon area, so he's more of a fast, you know, fast track kind of guy, but out here, he's been getting it done here in the motocross section, and Rob Mack having struggling high, struggling low. Well, you can see the brown dirt in the middle of that corner where it's really what called chunking out there. Got a huge hole developing in that corner. Oberg in that number 80 running third right now, trying to make it his second podium of the year. His best finish of the season was a third place at Dodge City Raceway Park. And obviously aerodynamics have, have no play in this form of racing. Actually, What's yes, up? it does. A little bit more than you might think, but that little fender on the back, it's not like it's not like crunching a quarter panel on, on a stock car. But with the, the hood and the balances and all the different stuff, is when these things go in the air, they become a big wing. And so you don't want them blowing over backwards and you don't want the nose pushing. So a little bit of balance there. This is a track that aerodynamics really pay, play a, a big factor. You try to move the weight around on the truck at all for a big jump. If it's nose heavy, you land, find yourself landing on the nose lot. No. Can you move weight around at all? It's a little too much because you can move batteries back and forth, but that's only going to be a couple percent. Um, really, you just set it up and you get it close to the limits and run it. Couple of laps to go in this one. The battle for third rage is on. We also want to check in on Jarrett Johnson, Jimmy Johnson's brother. Jarrett's out here in truck number 74, and right now he is running in the fifth position, Kelly Snyder. Well, he is. He talks about being a rookie in the sport, and it's really about learning as a driver and as a team. But I asked him, I know this track is hard to pass on. What's your game plan coming into today, guys? And he told me it's all about the veterans. They do make mistakes sometimes, and it's my job to capitalize on it. So for him, his goal for this year is to try to finish every race, and right now he's running in fifth. And I, I talked to him and his dad yesterday, and they've had some struggles, had the wrong carburetor on the truck early, had some, some engine issues and some different things that they're working a lot of bugs out of that truck. Maybe things are turning around for him. You know, I've known Jared since he was born, and I, and I can't be more proud of him than, than to watch him. You know, he raced some off-road stuff, did some motocross when he was a really little kid. When he was 14 and 15, did some little, you know, auto, you know little small, small car stuff with his brother Jimmy. But he got in this thing. That truck is heavy. It's got a small cubic inch motor, and he is driving the wheels off it. So very big kudos to Husqvarna and Herzog Motorsports and Jimmy Johnson Foundation for bringing Jarrett Johnson out here. He's a great addition to the series. Yeah, he is, and a good guy. Love, love having him out here and getting a chance to talk with him. The last lap, it's Bryce Menzies right now. He's on his way to win number four, the Red Bull number one. He carries that number one plate for a reason, 2011 and 2012. He was the champion of this division and only a few turns left to negotiate here before he gets himself another W. Brad, I mean, Brad, you know about this. You've got a couple turns to go, but there's still a lot of daggers out there that can kill you. So what's, what's going through your mind? Especially in those corners right there. You just got to look at the ruts down here when he gets into this corner. We sent a lot of trucks. But he definitely goes in there. He's nice and slow, <laughs> nice yeah, and easy. easy. Doing what he needs to do. This is like the last two miles of the Baja 1000. Don't break, don't break, don't break. <laughs> yeah. So congratulations to Bryce Minzy, my teammate. Awesome job, brother. You, you killed it today. Bryce Menzies gets the win. He is fourth of 2013. He is the points leader. CJ Greaves brings it home in second. And Rob McCachron does get in front of Mike Oberg to finish in the third position. Bryce Menzies eating donuts here at Red Bud. We'll come back and hear from him in just a moment. Thanks, Ricky. Welcome back to Red Bud. We have a winner in the Pro 2s, and he is downstairs with Kelly Snyder. Well, guys, taking his time out here. That's what a champion can do out here. Bryce Menzies, what a run that was for him. You always talk, John, Bryce, about qualifying and how it's a lot it's a lot harder during qualifying than it, when you have the race. You almost have the rabbit to catch here. So what a great run that was for you. Once you got past CJ, it was clear sailing for you there. Yeah, we've been past here all weekend. And, uh, you know, qualifying is never my good suit. I don't know why I don't ever do good. But uh, this race was awesome. This track got so rough. It was crazy. The ruts were like four feet deep. Uh, you know, so I just took my time to get around people slowly. I uh, didn't want to cause any damage, get the points lead back. So uh, we're looking good. 
to hopefully come back tomorrow and get that win. Woo! Well, guys, he talked about trying to make the passes early on, but he got past CJ as quick as he could, took his time, and pulled off on the top. Yes, he did. Looked good, and Menzies gets the win. CJ Greaves, though, a strong day, a first and a second. Rob McCachron brings it home in third. Yeah, Greaves, again, that just to go from truck to truck like that, talking to Ricky about the differences, but to jump in and out like that, that takes a lot of talent. Well, let's find out about uh, CJ's talent with Matt Yoakum. He climbed out of his race truck, walked over and kicked the left front tire. How big of a swing balance-wise this truck go, losing air in the left front? Yeah, you know, we had to completely change our setup. Uh, I think that was just a battle of the track right there. Nothing lost, nothing gained. So uh, we had to change our setup and figure out how to drive it with the flat. And uh, we just tried to hold it together and get up here on the podium. And here we are in second. What a great run he's had of late. Seven last eight races. He's finished first or second. Kelly? Well, guys, standing by with the guy who qualified with the fastest time, but it just seemed like you could not get past Mike Oberg. Talk us through some of those points when you finally made the pass. Well, you know, definitely. We qualified first, uh, you know, with the Pro 2. Everybody at Jenkins Brothers Racing does a heck of a job on this truck with Traxxas, BF Goodrich, Amsoil. They're absolutely awesome. And, uh, you know, due to the qualifying first, it inverts the th third row. And I just couldn't get by people, and we were getting really covered with mud there. About the halfway point, I uh, had a warning light telling me there was no uh, water pressure anymore. So we were kind of trying to maintain that, keep an eye on the water temperature and uh, make sure we got to the finish. We can't lose points to Bryce and uh, we're up here on the podium and that's what we need to do to try to win this championship for Traxxas. Well guys, he'll be in the Pro 4 race as well. Guys? Looking forward to seeing Rob Mack. Always, we should also mention that Bryce Menzies got the Oakley time bomb fast lap of the race. Menzies on top of the points, Brad stretching it out. Uh, now 33 up over McCachron. Greaves gains a little bit on McCachron. Chad Horde and then Mike Jenkins through your top five. Little bit of track preparation going on right now, and then we get to see the big dogs. They're gonna eat. It's the Pro Fours coming up next. coverage of the Traxxas Torque Series is brought to you by Cooper Tire. More than a tire to drive on, a tire to depend on. And by Ignite, the official fuel of USAC. It's a beautiful day for motorsports here in Buchanan, Michigan. Absolutely perfect conditions. Earlier today, the Husqvarna Buggy Series was out on the race course, and this series in 2013 has been dominated by Ricky Johnson's son, Luke. He drives buggy number 14. He'd won seven of eight coming into today, but it was Andy Zipperer who made an early pass to take the lead, and Brad, it looked like Zipperer might be able to get a win today and keep Luke Johnson off the top of the box. Well, to right there, he came up on a lapper, and he had no choice to go to the outside because the lap buggy was on the inside of the corner, but the lap buggy took a big push, shove zipper almost off the racetrack. Ricky Johnson gets to the inside, is able to get by and take the win. Luke Johnson gets the win in number 14. That was his eighth win in nine tries, and there is the Skywalker pumping his fist. He gets the win over Zipperer and John Frana. You see J.R. Wheeler brought it home in the fourth position. Now, earlier today, uh, two of our main combatants in the Pro Fours had a chance to talk with our two pit reporters. First, it's Matt Yoakum with Ricky Johnson, then we'll hear from Kelly with Johnny Greaves. Ricky Johnson chasing his third straight Pro 4 championship enters Red Bud second in the standings. So do you have that typical RJ style of push, 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 make Greaves, possibly make a mistake, lose focus? Well, there's a reason why Johnny's the winningest Pro 4 driver. I mean, the guy's, the guy's a multi-time champion and stuff like that. He's had a little bit better luck this year than I have. Uh, you know, he had a couple couple problems, but I just have to go 100%. It's checkers or wreckers. I have to win every point that I can. I'm a little bit bummed out. Rob Mack beat me yesterday in qualifying, so I only made one point on Johnny, but every point counts this late in the championship, so I have to win. I have to be up front, or I'm just going to drive around and, and, and submit to second place, and I don't want to do that. You're pulling all the drivers drivers here in the pro pit area they say the changes they've made to this racetrack it's now like an e-ticket ride excitement at every turn what's going to be the most challenging section do you think for you it's going to be the dirt to be honest with you it's everywhere the uh, red butt is different than what we're used to cranon is wide open it's like daytona this is more like martinsville and watkins glen all put into one 
because some of the hills you can't see down and you're trying to use trees as reference but there's so many trees one time I went off the track yesterday and the, and what happens is the the dirt ruts up with these 900 horsepower trucks and these 35 inch tires you go through the corner we're gonna have ruts that are probably two to three foot deep by the end of this moto and when when you when you're trying to do that coming through you can't just come through and back back it in you know Brad's used to doing that in a sprint car and he knows what it's like when you get a ruddy track it'll bite you and flip you so the dirt is the biggest challenge so RJ is second in the championship standings and he's second on the grid well, Johnny, all year long we've talked about the standard versus automatic transmissions in the Pro 4 class specifically. I know last year you tried to run an automatic at this track. It's so tight and technical. But this year you said you may not be able to do that with the way your truck's built. It, seem, it sounds like you're going to be one of the busiest guys out there with everything going on inside your truck. Yeah, for sure. You know, with uh, as small, as tight as this track is and uh, having the stick shift, you know, a lot of times it's an advantage because it, it, it really gets you out of the corners quick. But these corners are so tight, you know, it'd be nice just to slide it into gear when you need and, and uh, be able to power through the fluff. So I'm going to be a busy man, but I think we can make it work. Well, Scott Douglas decided to change his manual to an automatic. So good luck to you out there. I know it's going to be one difficult ride, but I'm sure you'll find the right gears. Yeah, you know, we don't have that option of having a second truck. So uh, we're going to make it happen with what we got and uh, put the Monster Toyota up front. There it is. It's been laid down by both of them. They, they say they're both going to finish first. And so obviously something's going to have to give. You see the points. It's Greaves and Ricky Johnson. Those two really starting to separate themselves from everybody else. Douglas McCachron and Mark Jenkins are next in line. A lot of happy winners so far in 2013. Let's flash back and show you happy, happy, joy, joy. can see there's been some wild action so far in the torque series in 2013 the pro fours are on the track brad what's a pro four these are the big dogs right here as you said they have minimum weight of 4,000 pounds four-wheel drive look up under the front there you might be able to see the the, the front the axles that go to the well they got guards on them but this truck has guards to, to keep all the roost and the rocks and stuff from hitting in that in one of the monster trucks but again it's 900 horsepower going to all four wheels, 20 inches of travel in the back. These things are bad. Kelly Snyder, tell us about Mark Jenkins. Well, guys, during the first lap of yesterday's qualifying run, Mark Jenkins snapped a connecting rod, sending it through the oil pin and ending his lap right before he crossed the finish line. So without a lap in the books, Mark will be forced to start in the back of the pack for today's main event. But don't count him out just yet. After an all-night motor swap, Mark and his team ran third quickest in this morning's practice. A strange season for the wild man, Adrian Chenny. Seventh in points, no podiums last year, seven podiums. Four times he finished second. They've been reworking that truck, trying to get lower CG. They've been working on the front and rear suspension. He told me they've made some big improvements. He's really expecting to see it really take hold on exit of the corner when he jumps in the gas. He's been working on a push. He feels like they've worked that out, Brad. Rob McCachron at his first four Pro 4 win last race in Chicago. They've been working on this new design truck all year. Not a lot of weight in the back. They've been adding some weight, moving the batteries back there. He feels like the track's good on a dry slick. He thought, I talked to him yesterday in practice before qualifying, he thought he would struggle with this truck on this particular racetrack, and they go out and set quick time. Yeah, at one point he called it evil. Well, we are just about ready to get this one started. The green flag will be coming out as our race analysis tells us that it will be a 16-lap race, and once again we'll have a caution midway, a competition caution at lap number eight. Jumping out in front, it is the Traxxas 47. Uh, Mike Jenkins, and he's running side-by-side side there with Adrian Jenny. Jenny has the lead. 
they were four wide. You saw Greaves in the middle. They got together and slid off the back banking there, but already on that first jump, there you can really see. Look at the air that these pro fours get, the horsepower. They use it all, and then they get some air off the jumps. And you can see there's a little bit more moisture in the racetrack. Ricky Johnson just telling us first couple of laps, it feels pretty good. You can really do the, the things you like to do with your truck, and then after that, it starts to run up and get nasty. Yeah, you know it's going to get bad. It's just going to get worse as the race goes on. Cheney leading Mark Jenkins, followed by Ricky Johnson in the Red Bull number one. Now you saw a Red Bull number one earlier. That was in the Pro 2 class with Bryce Menzies. Now we've got Ricky Johnson, who was in the booth with us. He's taken off his uh, announcer's helmet and, and put on his racing helmet. Yeah, yes, and they are teammates. And boy, those trucks, when they're sitting side by side in the pit area, it's hard to tell the difference. Adrian Cheney, though, uh, did what a great deal this would be for him oh. if he could come through and get himself a victory here because he has not had the greatest of seasons. It was interesting listening to uh, Matt Yoakum's piece on him there. You know, we zoomed in on him and he was kind of focused, really getting getting ready to race, pull that helmet on and go to, oh! Ricky Johnson gets in the back. Mike Jenkins turned the truck around, got pretty loose entering and Ricky Johnson got in the back of him. Crazy action there on the racetrack. You also saw a quick look there in the pit area at Scott Douglas, the number seven truck who had tucked into the pits. Look at the door on oh, Mark, Mark, Mark Jenkins. Out. Mark Jenkins, the whole right side, caved in on that truck. Look. Crazy action here in the early going right now. It's Mike oh. Jenkins in the 47 being followed by Rob McCachran. Then brother Mark Jenkins and let's see exactly what happened here is Ricky Johnson oh you can see Ricky's on the brakes Mike Mike Jenkins goes in really didn't do anything wrong but he did hang the truck out and you could see Ricky Johnson on the brakes trying to stop but it's a little slimy right there he gets in the back with of him and then Scott Douglas also had a problem and he, we saw a quick look at him in the pits he's the number seven Amsoil truck well he just got stuck out there on the berm yeah, the wall right there, he actually got connected up on the wall, got hung up for a while. Hey, we knew it was going to be a contact sport, as tight as this racetrack is. Ricky even mentioned it in the booth when he was with us. That, that, you know, that it's not a lot of passing zones here. You've got to make something happen. Yeah, he said there's going to be contact, and uh, there's been contact early. There's more pieces of uh, Rob Max, number 21, flailing around, and now it just happens to fly off right in front of Ricky Johnson there, the number one. And anybody thinks that these guys aren't athletes, look at, the, they, they're working very, very hard inside these trucks. The brutal pounding, they're coming off the jumps, but you can see them, I mean, really wheeling these 4,000 pound trucks. Good shot again of McCrack, McCaffrey, you can see that we talked about earlier, two brake pedals or a hand brake where they can use just the rear brakes if they want to get the back of the truck turned around, or they can use a pedal that uses all four brakes to slow the truck down. Up front, it is Adrian Cheney. Johnny Greaves running right behind Cheney there in the number 22 truck. Then it's Mike Jenkins in the 47. Rob McCachran working on him. Those two are teammates. And here's a battle up front now for the lead. Interesting, Greaves talking about the standard transmission. A lot of work on this racetrack. And Scott Douglas had been running a, a, a standard transmission and did go to an automatic for this weekend. Brought his truck out from last year but not particularly just for this racetrack. They just had some issues that they felt like they had to overcome, that they went back to something they knew and uh, looking for a good run, but unfortunately... Oh, Greaves with a big push right there. Entering. Drives out of it there in the number 22. Again, that's Johnny Greaves. That's CJ's dad. So you recognize the monster colors and you recognize the Greaves name. First two races, it was CJ. Now it's Johnny Greaves. And the old veteran trying to go after the lead. Jenny swings a little bit wide there, and that allows Johnny Greaves to close up on his rear end. You notice there's some debris out on the race course. They will not stop for debris. They're just going to keep on trucking. And most of that's fiberglass. These bodies are all fiberglass, so everything you see on the racetrack is fiberglass. Not really going to do any damage if they do run over it. Adrian Jenny, known as the Wild Man in front right now. Two fifth place finishes, his best of 2013. We'll see what he can do. You see a local yellow at least there, if not a full course caution. There's trouble for Mark Jenkins in car number 25. A problem for Mark Jenkins, he is off course. 
chatting with a USAC official. We'll head to break. We'll come back and sort it all out. Wild action early here in the Red Bull Pro 4s. Adrian Chinney, the wild man, leads it. Welcome back to Red Bud. The action is fast and furious right now. And out in front it is Johnny Greaves now in truck number 22, the Monster Energy truck. He's taken over the top spot. Man, these guys have been beating and banging on each other, racing everywhere. Good stuff right behind the leader, too, is going on as Mike Jenkins is trying to hold back the advances of Ricky Johnson. Johnson pushes up. That opens the door for Adrian Jenny. Here comes Rob Mack up the inside. Well, that was almost the same thing we saw. Like oh, the trouble for your leader. Johnny Greaves gets tipped over. He's out of shape. And that gives the lead to Mike Jenkins. Holy cow, how quick things change. It's almost as if the Pro 4s are just too much for this, for the tightness of this racetrack. You know what I mean? Oh, oh Ricky, Ricky Johnson. Johnson's upside down. No. Oh. Rob Mack has to check up and almost come to a stop. Ricky's there helpless. You can see fluid running out of the back there. I think that, that almost looks like coolant because it's hot. It's antifreeze running out of the back of the truck. Crazy action here at Red Bud. Mike Jenkins is out in front. And the competition caution has come out with eight laps complete. It's a full course caution as Ricky Johnson is on his side in truck number one. You, you know, he was roll cage facing traffic, but with all the trucks going through there, it was a fine line. If he would have gotten bumped, it could have put him back on his wheels where we've seen these guys you know, fire back up and take off. With any luck at all, he could have landed on his wheels and kept going. We're going to get a replay here. Ricky, the two-time and defending champion in the series. You heard him talking oh, earlier. There's and, Johnny Greaves. And Greaves is totally on his side, laying on the door, gathers it back, almost takes the truck out, the safety truck sitting there. And then let's see what happens to Ricky Johnson. Ricky running in second position at that point. You see Greaves able to sneak by. Chinny makes a pass on McCachran. Yeah, three trucks got yeah. by McCachran there as he was stopped trying to avoid. Ricky Johnson sitting her upside down. And now they'll try to get uh, Ricky's Red Bull number one tipped back onto all four. But the angle they're pulling on it there, there they go. They're... Looks like Ricky's okay moving around there in the cockpit. It doesn't look like there's any sort of a problem for our friend Ricky Johnson, but man, is his truck mangled up. We'll come back and uh, sort it all out for you. Wild action here at Red Bud. It'll be Mike Jenkins, the leader. When we return, we're coming right back. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Red Bud. The Pro 4 action has been fantastic. It's been wild. We're halfway through the race. Eight laps of 16 has been completed, and we are ready to get back on it. Mike Jenkins is your leader with Adrian Cheney right behind him. Then it's Scott Douglas running in third. Mike Jenkins looking to pick up his first win of the 2013 season under heavy pursuit here. Adrian Cheney trying to track him down. Cheney had a good run off the start there, but Jenkins have a good turn through that first one and two there. They will pull away down in the ravine as Cheney gets sideways. Douglas trying to take advantage of Cheney's action there. This is another I'm sorry, Bobby. Douglas in the Amsoil white truck, the third one in line. And this is the end of the racetrack. Well, I was getting ready to say where everything's been happening. In these corners of the racetrack, everything has been happening. So Greaves have trouble. Douglas and Greaves getting together there. Douglas is able to pick up the third position. Greaves continues on in fourth. Ricky Johnson right behind him in fifth. This has been a crazy one. Let's go back uh, and, and figure out what happened to Johnny Greaves a little bit earlier, Matt Yoakum. A drama filled day for all of our title contenders, including Johnny Greaves. Now, you saw him earlier go off course. He never got out of the throttle. That's a penalty in the torch series. So they threw the black flag on that monster truck. He went to the back, but he's moved his way all the way back up to P4. And also an update on Rob Mack under that stoppage. He changed that left front. Rob McCachran did duck into the pits. He had a low left front tire. Brad, you saw that. Yeah, you can see him rolling around. The tire was going flat. He was able to get in and get it changed. Oh, contact. Greaves and Douglas. Good action for third right now. It's Douglas holding down third with Greaves right behind him. And then Ricky Johnson. 
Mike Jenkins continues to show the way in truck number 47. Six laps to go in this one. And his brother Mark has two wins right here this year. And, and Mike out front leading this. And Ricky Johnson makes a pass of Johnny Greaves. And that's big as far as the points are concerned with Johnny Greaves coming in as the points leader here into this event. So Ricky Johnson trying to pick up as many positions as he can as he goes now to work on Scott Douglas. Boy, and Greaves, you can see that. I don't know if he's having a brake issue, Bobby, the way that thing pushed. We talk about they have the brakes front and rear. But oh, he's, he's man, struggling, that thing man. Is, he is definitely struggling. There's something really wrong with that truck. But it's no wonder everything it's been through. Now, Mark Jenkins had an issue earlier, and we'll flash back to that one. Kelly Snyder, what happened with Mark? Well, guys, when we saw Ricky Johnson and Mike Jenkins get into it, Mark Jenkins kind of caught the aftermath of that. His fiberglass on his passenger side got completely bent in, and his crew happens to think that his fiberglass caught on fire after that. But Mark didn't have any communication with his crew chief, K2, who was screaming, pull over, pull over, you're on fire. And so Mark had no idea that the fire was there until the safety crew waved him down on the track. Well, how about that? You're concentrating so hard, Brad, that you don't even know there's a fire right next to you in the passenger seat. Yeah, you're just so focused, especially everything that the action has been going on in this this race today and these trucks. I can guarantee these guys are on top of everything. The intensity, the adrenaline, the heart rate of these guys right now with the laps winding down is incredible. Look at Ricky Johnson's <laughs> truck. I mean, it's laughable at this point, the way some of these trucks look right now. And Ricky is running in third. He's gotten around Douglas and now is going to set his sights on Adrian Chinney. Yes, what's laughable when Ricky was up in the booth with us, I said, obviously, aerodynamics have nothing to do with these trucks. He said, well, they kind of do when you're in the air, this and that. <laughs> I guarantee you there's no aerodynamics on that truck. <laughs> the Red Bull number one in third position with four laps to go. There's still a lot of time, especially the way this track has, has oh. kind of bitten these drivers. With each and every turn, you just never know when disaster is going to strike. Getting rutted up. They talked to Ricky said earlier, it could be in his interview, three or four foot ruts by the time it's over, and some of that's coming true. These guys are really working hard. Mike Jenkins is out in front by 3.6 seconds right now. It's then Adrian Chinney, and then another three seconds back to the man you're watching there, Ricky Johnson, in the Red Bull number one, or what remains of the Red Bull number one at this point. And these guys have another race tomorrow, and these pit crews are going to be working all night hanging new bodies on these trucks. Not to mention all the maintenance and, and mechanical issues that they'll have to fix. And not to mention just the physical abuse oh. that the drivers themselves have been taking. They're going to... Uh, earn their rest this evening. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yep. There is Mike Jenkins. You heard from him earlier in our feature story. He's the head man, the president of Traxxas. And right now, he is looking at a season best job for Mike Jenkins so far. A third at Cranon, a third at Dodge City Raceway Park are his best. He's sixth place in the point standings. This would be a breakthrough win for Mike Jenkins if he can get it done. Well, I mentioned earlier, his little brother Mark has two wins this year. So Mike kind of has that to live up to as a car owner of Mark Jenkins' truck and out front leading this thing right now with the laps again winding down. Talked to Mike yesterday about the video that they use as we see Adrian Chinney now running in second, but a lot of these teams have people video camera uh, action on all of their practice laps, the time trial laps, and they'll go back and review that and, and look at, you know, how were they landing? Was it landing too far down in the front? Oh, yeah, and they have telemetry on these trucks, too, that they can analyze all that, where their lap speed, the compression of the shocks, and the, the travel, and they'll go back and analyze all that data to see where their fastest laps were and, and what line they can take. Time running out in this one now. Just a couple of laps to go from Mike Jenkins in the Traxxas number 47. Can he stay clean here these last couple of laps and get it done and bring it home? Nice, nice comfortable lead right now. Just has to hit his marks. And right there, he's going in nice and easy. Knows how far out in front he is. Now down in here again, this is where all the action's been all day. These next few corners right here. And then down over the downhill, these corners coming up. So he's going to try to tiptoe, I'm sure, through this. And Johnson really catching up to Chinny now in the battle for second. Ricky Johnson is all over Adrian Chinny. Johnson trying to take a look down to the inside on that corner. Chinny still with a truck length advantage as we see the white flag now one more time around. 
It's about one mile around this racetrack. Mike Jenkins in front trying to take it to the house. And this is where a driver really starts, especially for your first win, really start and start talk, talking to yourself, telling yourself to breathe, calm down, just hit your lines. Make sure you bring this thing home. Boy, it'll be really neat. And I, I can't imagine what victory lane is going to be like for Mike Jenkins if he can get this one done. Ricky Johnson to the inside of Chinny in that battle for second. You heard Ricky talking about every point. He wants to get it. Tried to cross over and move there, but Chenny, nice job of it, holding Ricky Johnson off. Mike Jenkins in the number 47, looking for win number one. Couple more corners here. Look at him tiptoeing, which he should, yep. rightly so, tiptoeing through that corner. Nice and easy. And Mike Jenkins gets it done. He gets the win. Adrian Chenny finishes second. Ricky Johnson by less than a truck length. Right behind him in third. But there's your winner, Mike Jenkins from Plano, Texas. The 48-year-old driver gets win number one. We're going to see a victory celebration like you haven't seen all season long. Stay tuned. That's coming up next from Redbud. Speed's coverage of the Traxxas Torque Series is brought to you by Traxxas, the fastest name in radio control, by Amsoil, first in synthetics, and by Peak Antifreeze. Run true. Welcome back. The Red Bull Pro 4 race has been run. We have a winner. It's Mike Jenkins. And let's go down to Kelly Snyder in the winner's circle. Well, guys, this is going to be one very excited interviewee. This has been a long time coming for Mike Jenkins, his first Pro 4 win this season. He's had to watch his brother take two wins this season on the team and has been very excited about it. But to take a win yourself and to be the title sponsor of Torque is definitely an accomplishment. We have his brother, Mark Jenkins, down here. Well, let's grab Mike. Well, Mike, let's get you on down here real quick. I know this has got to be one exciting race. This is known as a driver's track. It's so technical and so tight. These guys up here next to you, they worked hard for that second and third place position, but you held them off, taking the fastest lap time as well. Congratulations on that well-deserved first. Thank you, Kelly. It was a uh, wonderful trap track out here this weekend. Trax just puts on a heck of a show. We've got some great competitors out here. I had Ricky, I had, I had Adrian, Mark went out early. You know, it was a, it was a wonderful race out there. The track was tough. It, it threw us on two wheels all over the place. We weren't really expecting that, but let me tell you, I'm out here because I got great people back in my office, and I got great people that repair these trucks and bring them out here. Without their dedication and their loyalty to that company Traxxas that I call ours, it wouldn't be able to happen. So that's this is for you guys, everybody back at Traxxas. Thank you very much. Well, Mark, we also know that you and Mark always have a, a constant battle and a competition going on. So you're taking an Oakley bomb and a first place. How does that feel? Well, you know what? I've had, I've been fortunate to have a couple of wins and I've not had an Oakley bomb. So this is very important to me. It gets to show these guys. And I'll tell you where this came from. Quick little story, Steve Menzies. He told us we had traction control and our drivers couldn't drive with his drivers. Guess what, Steve Menzies? You're welcome to take his truck and just look it all over. There ain't nothing there. Well, congratulations to Mike Jenkins. Let's go back to you. Good stuff from the winner circle there. Mike Jenkins gets the win, his first of 2013. Adrian Cheney finishes second. Ricky Johnson third, Brad. All I can say is, wow, what a day, what a race. Nice to see Mike, Mike Jenkins bring it home. The wild man brings it home second, Matt. Absolutely, Adrian Cheney, impressive run. How do you even describe this day? How many times you had to fend off Ricky Johnson at the finish? It was such a tough battle. I was, uh, I mean, I wasn't even thinking about who was behind me. I was just trying to keep the, the truck on the track because I was down about 50% on my power steering. So I, that's why I was like, I was like climbing every wall, climbing every embankment, going everywhere. It was just such a battle. And then I had a big, big old rock came down and lodged itself in my back. Thank goodness we had the, uh, the mandatory or whatever, the uh, red flag, so I could try to get that out of there. It was a very tough race. I really wanted to get up there and give Mike a, a run for his money, but um, all I could do to just keep it on the track. First podium of 2013.
Well, guys, standing by with Ricky Johnson. Ricky, all I can say is look at this truck, and he finished third. What a race. Yeah, John, Johnny flipped on his own, gave it to me. Then I flipped on my own, and then had to go in and had the hood in my face and stuff like that. But it's an honor to be on the last race on speed. So, guys, thank you for having me up in the booth. Thank you for having me on the track. Thank you, Red Bull, KMC, BF Goodrich, FK Roddins, everybody. Thank you so much. What a way to end the day. Guys? Fantastic racing. Let's take a look at the point standings. There it is, Johnny Greaves by just six now over Ricky Johnson, Brad. It's getting close, and there are just a few races to go. The season is winding down, Bobby. Douglas brings it home in the, or is third in the points now, then Rob McCachron and Mark Jenkins now fifth in the point standings. Well, that's going to do it for our action here today at Red Bud. The next Traxxas Torque Off-Road Championship event is August 31st at Crandon, Wisconsin. For more on the Traxxas Torque Series presented by Amsoil, log on to speed.com. For producer Pete Richards, director Brian Lockwood, for Matt Yoakum, Kelly Snyder, and Brad Doty, I'm Bobby Gerald wishing you well from Red Bud. Congratulations to Mike Jenkins, everyone at Traxxas, and all of our winners here today.